During the 20th century, Mexican immigration often occurred because of the need for workers in the United States and the need that many Mexican people had for work and money. Mexican workers were usually met with enthusiasm for American citizens, especially people who worked in the farming industry. However, there were many cases where the United States' opinion on these recently immigrated workers shifted and the workers faced deportation from the United States or were ignored by American society. To commence, it is important to know that repatriation is different from deportation. Deportations are done by the federal government with a warrant or warrantless if the person leaves on their own. Repatriations in this case, however, can be done by the federal government, the Mexican consul, the local private and public welfare agencies, or even the Mexican community. Therefore, the repatriation was carried out not just by the U.S. government, but by many other forces and groups. In continuation, the Mexican repatriation was a series of deportations that occurred from 1924 to 1936 that aimed to remove recently immigrated Mexicans from the United States. Up to 2 million Mexicans were deported, 60% of which were actually U.S. citizens and not immigrants. These mass deportations occurred because the United States and Mexico had several issues, many revolving around the economy, and many Americans chose to put the blame on Mexican immigrant workers. In a letter sent to a Mexican immigrant titled, Repatriation of Mexicans Aboard Transport Progreso, it is shown that Americans and Mexicans have now developed an opposing opinion towards Mexican immigrants working in the U.S. The document focuses on how going back to Mexico felt like a very open process and promises that upon the Mexicans' return, they would be met with land and other forms of help so they could be successful in Mexico. Moreover, these types of letters were approved by both Mexican and American services, indicating that there were various reasons why both nations wanted Mexican immigrants to return to Mexico. Mexico supported these actions because they were running low on workers, so they needed the immigrants to return. The U.S. supported these actions because they were running low on jobs, so they wanted to have more jobs open for American citizens. The deportation started because the U.S. had been experiencing economic problems and believed that deporting most of the Mexican population would help solve them. However, this was later seen to not be true since the problems in the economy were not solved or changed. According to research done by Francisco Valderrama and Raymond Rodriguez, the United States lost money when many of the deported Mexicans took large amounts of money they had saved up with them. The money taken by those who were deported totaled to roughly $7 million during this time. Furthermore, Valderrama and Rodriguez report that Americans were not willing to take on the jobs that the Mexicans had held, which revolved around the farming industry. It was at first thought that since Mexican workers were very common sources of labor, they were taking the jobs that could be given to Americans, especially given America's economic issues. This was mainly because Mexicans would work for less money than Americans. However, during this time period, because of economic issues, getting less money for work became a common thing for everyone, not just Mexican immigrants or American citizens. In the words of Norman T. Humphrey and his analysis of the Mexican repatriation, the imported Mexican found himself an unpopular competitor for jobs. However, it is also important to note that it was not only Americans who wanted the repatriation to occur, it was also supported by Mexican officials. In his novel, Becoming Mexican American, Ethnicity, Culture, and Identity in Chicano, Los Angeles, Jorge Sanchez mentions in his own words that Mexico realized that the past and present siphoning off of many hardworking citizens hampered its recovery from the ravages of revolution, particularly in the northern states which lacked an adequate labor supply. This was after many Mexican citizens had been sent to the United States to work. Basically, the Mexican Revolution had just ended in 1920, and Mexico was suffering economically and needed more labor. But like previously mentioned, many of its citizens had gone to work in the United States. Therefore, the Mexican government was also very supportive of these mass deportations to regain their workers. It is important to note that throughout the history of the U.S., there have been varying opinions towards the value of Mexican labor. During some periods, it was highly promoted, like during the era of the Bracero Program. Other periods denounced it and by extension denounced Mexican immigrants, like during the Mexican repatriation. Therefore, the Mexican repatriation serves as a tool to understand how Mexicans were treated in the United States throughout the 20th century.